Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech. And today we're gonna to be checking out some productivity tools for Linux. So let's get started. Now in my last video, I just recently reinstalled uh, KDE onto this laptop. And in that video, I did cover some fresh install stuff like uh, FlatHub and a few other applications that I would install into this laptop. But now we're gonna turn this into more of a productivity machine. So I'm gonna show you some of the applications that you can install that is alternative to what you would use on Windows. So let's begin. Here's my desktop, if you're not familiar with it, this is Kubuntu. And everything we talk about can be installed through the App Store if you followed installing Flatpak as well. The first thing I'm gonna show you is uh, LibreOffice which is very common if you install any desktop environment that usually gets pre-installed with the operating system itself. So we're gonna check it out. The first thing we're gonna uh, check out is LibreCal, which is their version of spreadsheet or Excel. And here we have the outlook of the new LibreOffice. Now you can actually change the theme on top to make it look more Excel-like. That's why it looks very similar to what you would find on Excel, um, at least the ribbon part, you have the tabs and everything up here. You can still do formulas or you can do the dragging and copy that over. Or if you hit control, I think, and you drag it, just copy. So you have all the functions that you would have in your regular Excel. You also have functions here as well. And if you needed to, you can use macros. It's not VBA, but it is still macros if you need to write up any programs for your spreadsheet. LibreOffice also has presentation, which is their PowerPoint. And you also have their writer, which is your Word document. And they all support Microsoft DocX and XLS and all this other stuff. So LibreOffice did help me out a bunch. I mean, it got me out of a bunch of jams because it just it's just there and it works. Now, jumping into the Nix Office tool that I actually highly recommend because I usually use it if I'm going to turn this into a productivity machine. Now, in most cases, if you are just leaving it alone and not really going to be doing Excel stuff, LibreOffice is fine for you. But the next one I would use is called Only Office. Now, the reason why I like to use this one is because we are a creature of habit. We're brought up with using Word or Doc, and we're so used to what they call the ribbon or the menu bar on top that trying to learn something new like LibreOffice might be a little confusing. So Sticking with something called only office will actually get you to look exactly like your Word document that you are used to. I mean, there's gonna have some extra features on the side and new uh, tools on the side as well, but you are very familiar with this layout because we've been staring at this for years. And this is why I recommend this is because I don't have to learn something new. Like going into Excel, you can see everything looks just like you would if you were to find it in office. You have all these little things here. Uh, same thing goes for here. If I was to copy this, it will come down. Or if I was to do the same thing here, oops, grab the corner and it'll add the numbers up. Everything works here. You still have your formulas, auto sum. It has all that in here. It's everything that you would find what you're used to in Excel. It's all in only Office. So I do recommend it. They do have a free version, which is the one we're using. And they do have a pro version. And you could look online. They have the comparisons between the two. Only Office from the community edition to the enterprise edition, I don't think there's much change. So sticking with the free version is perfectly fine. Now the third Office product that I like to show you guys is WPS. If you are, again, familiar with Word or familiar with Excel, you'll be familiar with this as well because it looks just like it. The tools are very similar. It has even the, the font similar to what you're used to and everything will look exactly and feel exactly the same. So you're not really learning a new product. You're just getting something that will work for your environment. Same thing with spreadsheets. If I was to go here, it's green, you know, like what Microsoft would use. And we have all the stuff up here. It's missing the cell styles that will expand, but it's here. It's all exactly very familiar to you. This also does uh, do the same thing like it would before if I was to do one, two, three, four, and I could drag this down. And if I needed to auto sum this, I could just grab this, go to formulas and auto sum. It'll grab the auto sums. It does have formulas just like on any other spreadsheet. So between the three that I just showed you, um, I like only Office the most. Uh, WPS Office, um, you might be familiar with this as well because if you used any Amazon Fire devices, WPS is actually installed onto the Android Fire tablets. So 
That is it for the three Office products I would like to use. LibreOffice is usually installed with your operating system. You can leave it if you want, or you can install other Office utilities. Only Office is probably the closest to Microsoft Excel you can get. And then you have WPS Office. WPS Office does also have a pro version, but we are using the free version and it's fine. There's not much difference from pro to um, personal use. Now up next is PDF readers. So part of productivity, we always read and edit PDFs all the time. Now the one I like to use the most is actually this one called Ocular. I think that's how you say it. It comes pre-shipped with KDE and GNOME has their own version called EVN. I'll leave it right here. I don't even know how to say that, but they're both about the same. And I only name these two is because these are the two that allows you for editing and annotations for PDF documents. So I'm gonna open a document over here and I'm gonna open this, which is the Magpie. And it views the PDF perfectly fine. Now, if I wanted to just view a PDF, I could open it in Firefox if I wanted to. But what I like about these is that this one allows me to insert text. So I could just type here and boom, I have my inserted text. So I could fill out forms using this version. I also like this Magpie magazine. If you haven't noticed, I'm actually in this magazine. So. <laughs> If you guys ever pick up this uh, version, Magpie 101, which actually, if you go on my Discord, I have a download link for this. I am in this description of magazine, which is pretty cool. Next, we have that other one that I talked about. And I don't think I have it downloaded, so we're gonna check it out. PDF, and you see how there's many of these? They have XPDF, they have uh, uh, Adobe Reader, which is not really supported anymore from Adobe itself. But we have a bunch over here and I gotta find the one that's from GNOME because that's another one that I use. Depending on the desktop environment that I'm in, right here, this is the one. Document viewer, but if I was to install this, let me cancel this. I'm gonna install it from Flatpak. Oh, I do have it installed from Flatpak. Okay, so here we have this version and I'm gonna go into downloads and go back to my Magpie magazine and it looks very, very similar to what we have over there. I could highlight text, no text. I could do stuff with this just like I would do it in the other one. I could fit page and scroll through everything that I need if I'm just viewing it. So yeah, those are the two um, PDF readers that I would use. Now, if you have WPS Office installed, WPF Office also has a PDF reader. And this is their version of the reader. And I believe if you have the pro version, you can edit. Otherwise, it's just a view only. So that's why I recommend the first two because the first two allows you for editing. Last but not least, we're gonna check out some email clients. And I do have a favorite here. Now, anytime you install Linux, most cases, if you install Firefox, it will come with Thunderbird. And Thunderbird is the most commonly used mail client. And honestly, it's not bad. The only thing that it doesn't have is exchange support. Unless you have to pay for, I think this specific plugin that will allow for exchange. But otherwise, if you're using IMAP or POP3, you'll be fine. Now I am using a temporary email address, which is this weird one right here. And you could see this is how everything would look like. Now I don't like this for some reason. I like this better in uh, light mode. So if I go into appearance, add-ons and themes, and then go into light mode and enable, I actually like Thunderbird in light mode. It just, it looks better I think in my case, but it does have dark mode and light mode. Now next, and if you have GNOME, this comes default with GNOME, which is evolution. This is a very simple email client. You can actually just uh, add whatever emails you want, but it doesn't have Exchange support. So if you guys are using Exchange, Office 365 or something like that, you might not be able to connect to those with this. Actually, maybe 365. Now I'm gonna quickly add an email client and I use this service called tentmail.us.com. If I head over here, this will generate an email. Right now it's not doing it. Uh, I think I have some cookie issues right now because I cleared out my cookies and everything and I'm not even gonna diagnose this, but um, I do have the information from before, which I saved just in case. And this is the only temp mail that allows you to use IMAP or POP, so you could use email client. Otherwise, if you use other temp mails, they don't even have that access. I am gonna pop over here, insert this information here, all right? So we're gonna drag this, copy this, email, skip lookup because it's not gonna find it. We could use IMAP or POP3. It's mail.tempmail.us.com port is 143 and username is your email user and make sure this is actually on none. There's no encryption on sending out email so you gotta be careful with that. And we're gonna do next. Next 
And then this is a server for SMTP, which is mail.tempmail.us.com. And then we have our port, which is gonna be 26. Again, this one will have to be start TLS and username is the same as before. And then we could hit next. Username is that, yes, apply. It's gonna ask you for password, which I have this weird one right here. Okay. And there we have it. We logged into our email. I go into inbox and we have that testing email that we have earlier. Uh, swap it over here and you can see. Now again, this also looks better in light mode uh, just because all the emails come in white. So it kind of blends in a little bit easier, but it does work. It's very easy to use. It does have calendar support, has contact support. Uh, same thing with Thunderbird. So these two are like comparatively almost the same. Now, what I do like to use, my personal one that I would use for email client is called Blue Mail. Blue Mail is something you might be very familiar with. If you have this on your Android phone or any other operating system, you could actually use something called the Magic Sync and it'll generate a number and you could just link all the accounts together without inputting all the information again. But if we're gonna do this, we could hit continue. And why I didn't join this yet is because what I wanted to show you. This actually supports Outlook, Exchange, 365. It supports everything that you need, some sort of services. And it's pretty. This is such a pretty thing. And if you're gonna use this for an Android app, which I do, it also supports generative AI for messaging. It could summarize the email that's coming in. You could actually send email. I don't even know why I'm doing this big ad for it, but Blue Mail is a very good uh, email client. So I'm gonna go into manual setup, IMAP over here, email address. Again, I'm just gonna pop this, username, the password, IMAP server is mail.tempmail.us.com. Again, no security for this outgoing. And this is 143. Next. And then for the incoming, mail.tempmail.us.com. Start TLS. And this port is going to be custom. And you want to change this to 26. This is just for my thing I'm, I'm gonna erase that temp mail as soon as this video is done but if you guys are ever interested in using temp mails that's the way I'm just gonna name this temp and then we'll go next you get to choose your accent color you could use default or compact style I'm gonna use this and here's my test mail everything looks so clean on this and it does support calendar and contacts as well you can play around with this it does have dark mode if you use the Android version it even has the dark mode for the Amoli LED uh, so it actually turns it black black and saves you battery while you're browsing your emails composing an email over here see now it has introduced blue mail gem AI you can now write and summarize your emails using AI so yeah you can use uh, generative emails for this this is how it looks like so I'm very familiar with this because this is the style of Gmail client. So if you're familiar with the web version of Gmail, this is very similar to that. And if you want something super lightweight that you could install anything, even on a Raspberry Pi or anything like that, you can check out Geary. Geary comes shipped with a lot of operating systems, but again, this is super lightweight. It is quirky and it does have some stuff that it doesn't support like signatures. It does support signature, but it doesn't allow you to insert an image in your signature. There's a few things. It's just keep in mind this is super lightweight but it works so if you need an email client just so you need an email client this is where you would go uh, it does have like conversations so as you're emailing a, uh, stuff that goes through it looks like there are conversations over here not a huge fan of that style because it gets confusing for me but again it keeps it simple anyway that is it as far as uh, Office Part Activities. There are a lot more tools out there. I know there's more PDF readers. There are definitely way more email uh, clients, but these are the three or the top three I would consider. Uh, there's more Office products as well, but again, these are the top three I would consider. If you guys have any Office productivity tools that you guys use, let me know down in the description below because I like to check them out. And we're gonna be going through this course of other tools that I'm gonna be installing, like, uh, multimedia, stuff for photo editing. We're gonna be installing all the applications into this desktop. Obviously, I'm gonna remove the ones that I don't want because I'm not gonna be using WPS on this machine, but I will be keeping only Office like that. I'm gonna be removing some applications as I go. But if you guys have any more recommendations for our Office productivity programs, hit me down in the comments below. Anyway, if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hit that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is gonna be out. And I say my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.